Hi there, John. How are you? Thank you so much for coming in to speak with me today about Sing Street. Um, so I suppose my first question was, um, so for your last film, Begin Again, you went to Manhattan, but this film mm -hmm. seems you come back to Dublin, where you would have made once as well. Was mm -hmm. this a kind of conscious decision? Did you feel a need to come back to your roots? <laughs> um, that's an interesting... I was just saying or thinking before that actually it was a... Um, an American producer, Anthony Bregman, who ended up producing the movie, who, who I mentioned this film to when we were doing Begin Again. And in fact, he was the one that sort of said that was a really good move in terms of your career, you know, to go from this thing with Kira or whatever to back to your roots to make something with not, you know, a lot of non-actors and a story that's small and true to you. Um, you would think it was the other way around, right, that the American producer would be like, oh, come to Hollywood and make, you know, remake... West Side Story or something, um, and it was. And it's once, once, once he put it in that way, I was like, yeah, kind of. That's that's a good. That's a good thing to do after having made you know a bigger film, as you say in Manhattan, and come back to 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 wrap minds and make a little film is a kind of a an interesting and was was very very rewarding actually. I have to say, and it made me sort of believe in that idea of that your trajectory doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't have to be always what's the biggest thing, what's the next thing and the bigger thing. But to mix it up and go and shoot a film on an iPhone for nothing, and which is something I've believed in, but this is sort of a testament to the fact that that can kind of work for you, because we screened the film in America. N you know, all the kids are new, there's no big stars, and they really enjoyed it. And they didn't seem to care how it was made, they just enjoyed the story. And so it, it kind of confirmed a suspicion in me that you should just make what you want to make. Great. In fact, you could say that all three films, Sing Street, Once and Begin Again, could regar be regarded as these kind of modern day musicals. Was mm -hmm. making these kind of films always a part of your career path or did it just happen? Um, I always made films with a big focus on music in them. To probably, I mean, I remember collaborating with people that I worked with before saying, you know, can you stop putting another piece of music in that film or and, and, and if anything, I sort of went the other direction that actually we're going to put more and more music in films. I don't know why I think music... I think when I was young, I, w I watched, you know, in the, in the 70s or 80s, films would come on uh, TV, like old musicals that, that thankfully channels like BBC and stuff would play old great music, musicals from Hollywood and stuff. And I can't do that anymore, obviously, but... Uh, um, it seemed to me like music and film were, were married. You know, I always thought like the director must have written that music because it's so good and it's so tied into the drama of this piece and surely, and then you realize, oh, it's not that. But it, to me, it was like imprinted on my mind that music and film were almost sort of um, w w welded together. Uh, and it took me years to realize that oh, that's not the case. Actually, you hire a composer and you, the composer consults the director, but it's not like the director is pulling all those strings, you know, is controlling all that. And I, it took me a long time to realize that was the truth, but then it also took me a longer time again to realize that's what I want to do, is, is tell stories that, have, that really use music to move the narrative along and to you know, develop plot lines and characters and stuff like that. So. Yeah, yeah. In terms of the backdrop for the film, the 1980s were like a really interesting time for music, but you show how actually there was quite a lot of financial struggle in Ireland at that time as well. Given that we've just kind of come out of recently, you know, quite a bit of economic strength, I was wondering if you kind of considered that relatability between the then and now when you were making Sing Street. Well, I didn't so much, I mean, the two things, I mean, they are tied together. I think when you're... The reason for making the film a period film was not that I had anything to say necessarily, on, nothing on my chest that I wanted to get off. It was that if I was going to make a musical about some kids forming a band, if I set it now, it'll date really quickly. Because I'm, you know, early 40s man trying to figure out what kids are... What's cool now is going to date... By the time I've put a clapperboard on it, it'll be out of date. Um, and also, I just don't know what young people are listening to now, really. I know what I'm listening to, but it doesn't really relate. And I try to be hip and cool with the kids. It's just really embarrassing. So, but I thought, I do know about the 80s, and I formed a band then, and I know what was cool, and I know what was good. And so that was the reason for setting it in the 80s. And having, having made that decision, then the circumstances of life are in. It's very important in a musical not to just be, even though this is a light movie and a family movie and all the rest, 
it can't just be song, a little bit of dialogue song. The songs, you know, the dialogue can't just be stitches between each song. It has to actually, so that's why the, the, the recession, the, you know, you're setting a film in the 80s, you have to talk about, you know, the fact that nobody had any cash and people were inventing things and making things up. They were stitching their own clothes or de-stitching them or, you know, they weren't relying on Bangladeshi kids to tear their jeans the way they are now. They were actually doing it and they were saying something because of the lack of money, we were expressing ourselves through how we made our clothes or how we made our music or how we made our mixtapes or how we spoke and walked. All that stuff was very interesting. And also the fact that the news was just so bad. Every, I remember every day turning on, you know, my parents would be watching the nine o'clock news and it was like, oh, disaster after disaster. After, you know, the troubles in the north, the tax bills, the Lebanon, the, the whole world seemed to be just going through the, you know, this awful, awful shifts. And, and yet in Ireland, we had this sort of, I think, a kind of a strange spring in our step. I think it was a really interesting time for Ireland. It was almost a little bit more like the 60s were to America, you know, in the rest of the world. We kind of missed the 60s. Um, they didn't quite happen. The church had a big grip still on, on Ireland. And it was like the 80s was that first little kind of heartbeat of, oh, it doesn't have to be this way. You know, we can sort of, um, dress a little differently, express sexuality became, you know, it was the beginnings of what we saw now in the last couple of years in Ireland, I think started off in sort of the early 80s. So that comes into the movie and is there, but it's not, it's not the, it's not what the movie is about, but it's the, it's the backdrop for the movie. Perfect. And just my final question, John, was that it's been like nearly 10 years since you made Once and your career has taken off as has that of Glenn Hansard and the film has gone on to have yeah. a life of its own with the Broadway musical. Mm. Do you ever think back to those days when it was just yourself, some non-professional actors, two digital camcorders and a dream? Mm. <laughs> um, I think that uh, it's been, the, the, the Once thing has probably been that will definitely be the opening obituary line. Probably, I don't want to speak for Glenn, but you know, certainly for me, it'll be, I, I'm still the once guy. And I think if I made Citizen Kane tomorrow, I'd be the once guy. It's just a thing that goes around your neck and you wear it well, or you, you, you wrestle with it. I love it. I think it's great. And um, I'm, I'm delighted the film has meant a lot to people in a very real way. And I still get couples coming up to me saying, you know, I got married to that song because of that scene or I met my boyfriend at once and he's, we're still together, we got married or we had a kid the other day or like amazing human stories that you couldn't but be, you couldn't but realize that's going to be the defining moment of my career. Um, and so many people's careers that was involved in the movie, just everything that, that could have happened to a film that was good happened and continues to happen. It's, 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 it's really sort of uncanny and that's a lovely, a lovely thing to be to be kind of part of and um, it is really the gift that keeps on giving and it's allowed me to make Sing Street and Begin Again and all these other projects and so no, long may it, long may it last. <laughs>